<coughs> All right. So, what? You got a bit? No, I got bad news. What? You didn't watch Chainsaw Man? No. Not that one from yesterday. Mm, last one I saw was when Makima fucked everyone's shit up. So okay, I think I'm yeah. two episodes behind. Yeah. So am I am I looking forward to these two episodes? Oh yes. Yes, you are. Yes? Okay. Alright, I will take your word for it then. We happy. Especially with the one from yesterday. Alright, all right then. If that's the case, then I know what I'm doing tomorrow. All right. Um yep. let me think. What what's a bit right now? <laughs> <laughs> um no, I just had the chainsaw man. I had the um uh, God, what else? Tis the season. Tis the season. This uh, Christmassy, Christmassy times. Mm, I don't know. Should we just jump Fuck. into the review? <laughs> Do I just cancel all this and just like jump straight into? The- no, I'm keeping all I this. Feel- We're jumping straight into the review. No, no, no. People are gonna just drop the show. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming us onto your screens or onto your headphones, depending on how you're watching this. I'm Pinocchio. <laughs> and I'm Chema reviewing Guillermo del, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. This is the it's rollback. The rollback. <laughs> so I'm surprised you didn't say Jiminy Cricket. His name is not Jiminy Cricket. It's Sebastian J. Cricket, according to this version. Oh, that's right. This was Sebastian yeah. J. Cricket. Man. So- Fuck you. So real quick, before the synopsis, Chema texted me when he was like, I started crying 10 minutes in. I was like, bullshit. No movie can make me cry in the first 10 minutes. I was I was wrong. The first 10 minutes had you like, maybe maybe we won't make everyone cry, but definitely it's going to it's it gonna like do heart something. Strings. Yeah, definitely. Uh, even if you know what's coming, like the movie starts telling you what's coming and it's still... It's all about that execution. So we're talking about Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Love will give you life during the rise of fascism. Fascism? Fascism? Fascism. No, uh, fascism. Oh, now I'm fucking up. Fascism. Fascism. There we go. English is a stupid made up language. In Mussolini's <laughs> Italy, a wooden boy brought magically. Hey, 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 hey. Remember. Remember. I speak I speak English because it's the only language you talk. So, <laughs> are we going down this route? Are we doing yeah, this? We might as fucking well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, a wooden boy brought magically to life struggles to live up to his father's expectations. So, Guillermo del Toro, renowned Mexican treasure, uh, directs his first animated film, a stop motion movie, uh, co-directing with Marcus Gust- Gustafsson. Uh, based on the the, the classic uh, story, uh, we've seen a lot of versions of this in the past couple of years. It's become very popular, but the Toro is, is here alone, actually. I think so. Yeah, uh, and so, but here's the Toro's version. It premiered on Netflix. It came out in a couple of theaters, and it's grown. A, it's grown quite a fan for pretty pretty fast. Uh, the Toro is like a person that pretty much everyone wants to work with. He's uh, he's a hot commodity, so. Uh, We've loved El Toro. Uh, we uh, earlier in the year we talked about Nightmare Alley, which we were both uh, we we're both fans of. And uh, I'm a huge fan of El Toro. I've been a huge fan since his career started. So uh, it's great to see him uh, move into this this direction, uh, which which I really enjoyed. So, what did we think about Guillermo del Toro's Pino- Pinocchio? Pinocchio, P- P- Pinocchio, yeah. So there's been uh, three Pinocchios this year, four Pinocchios in the last three years, if you want to count the 2019 version. So. <clears throat> yeah, the the market has been somewhat saturated, but and I'm and I'm happy to say this <clears throat> by a country fucking mile. I think this is part of the best adaptation ever of this story, and I'll and I'll fist fight somewhere on that one. I don't know who wants to defend the OG, but you know, most um, definitely, I think uh, there's something really special <clears throat> and sweet and and just magical about this version specifically. The fact that it takes Del Toro's uh, darkness. And manages to create something very lifeful and alive and and serious and heavy, um, yeah. From this really old story, um, 
so so the movie begins the first like 10 minutes of the movie are dedicated to establishing the relationship between uh the carpenter Geppetto and his son carlo yeah. um and and like the first 10 minutes i, I want to compliment i'm going to give it a few different compliments throughout but the music in this movie is good all the way through, including in the very beginning when they, uh, you know, my son, the, yeah. you are my son, like stuff like that, like really sweet, heartfelt moments between a father and a son out their father, son, that that theme is throughout the movie. And we'll talk more about it when we get to Pinocchio and the Geppetto. But in this first part, Geppetto is just, he's happy. He has the best son in the world a good kid who wants to be just like his dad. They get along, they work together. It's everything you could hope for. Life is going as great as it possibly could. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember when, and I really like it. Like they make this kid really, you like him. He's not a brat. This, there, there's nothing bad disgustingly likable that kid. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Del, Del Toro, the son of a bitch gives us a really likable character and then fucking snatches him away. In one yeah. of the most heartbreaking moments, like you could happen, and also somehow like methodical and and like themeful because it happens in a church. Our church yeah. gets air raided and bombed, and they even say, you know, the the town wasn't on the list of of uh, places to be Targets. bombed. Yeah they, yeah, they were just dropping their loads so they can make it home faster. Yeah, and this poor kid who went inside to get a fucking pine cone. He goes inside to oh yeah like i forgot it's the perfect pine cone yeah you know the cost of war and and i think that's a theme that runs throughout a lot of De del toro's uh movies right yeah uh death and darkness and 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 th those themes are always present but weirdly enough never in a uh, never in a the like sure it's it's a little sad but never in a like a uh, negative or depressing way like it's always represented as like a part of life uh there's a super famous uh interview after he won a golden globe where they asked him like you seem like a very joyous happy person how do you make such dark movies and he says i'm mexican that's how we do shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah uh so like that that became like his thing and he uh, if you followed along uh how he's been handling the press for this movie he's been so good at expressing this this movie because all the questions that he gets are can i watch this with kids like can can kids watch it is it, is it okay for kids like i know you make uh, like dark movies like can, can my kids watch it and like every single time he he would answer like remember that kids now are not what kids were like a long time ago like we as kids we grew up with the disney one that was dark for us because it, yeah. it had some dark moments but now a kid now is someone like Greta Thunberg. Like kids are going through this post 9-11, post uh COVID, post like all this world. Like they know how dark the world is and they know it from a super early age. So the art that we create for them has to reflect that. So yeah, the movie is dark and the movie do does have like those moments, but never in a way that feels uh I, I forgot the word, but like it's never like hopeless. Depressive? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it's never like inherently hopeless. Like it, the, the, there's such a wonder and a charm to every single touch that, that, that the movie has, from like the movements of the characters to the voices. Do you know who this? Who's the voice of Geppetto? Geppetto? No, I know Obi Wan's in this. Yeah, Obi Wan is a cricket, but uh, Geppetto is uh, he's David Bradley. He was uh, Mr. Filch from the Harry Potter movies. Really, Mr. Filch? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good for him. I, I did not pick yeah. up on that at all. Yeah, no, that the, Toro <clears throat> loves working with him, so he just chose him for for Geppetto. And yeah, you could you couldn't tell like he was he, he was that locked in in this in this voice, and uh, yeah, no, the voice acting is great. The movements, I love how the the, the Toro explained once that he made the characters sometimes like when they're walking they they'll like stumble like real people do like they'll, they'll just trip or something like they don't have to do that. It would add a lot of time to the schedule because they have to animate that but it, there's something so realistic about that that feels it feels magical like this whole movie just feels so magical well see and i don't think it's just me i think those little touches are what make a good animated film great when they have those little moments that you have to animate that add more to it whether it was shrek and the ab living whether it yeah. was any of the toy story films and the little details 
any of the Pixar yeah. films, turning red. I think I mentioned that too, where again, the little details matter and you're right. Yeah. Animating in that capacity, it means something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so after the death of Carlo, we're introduced to um, someone Sebastian. interested, Sebastian J. Cricket. Yeah. Yeah, he might be the best character in this movie, but we'll see. Like <clears throat> hands down, uh, my, probably my favorite design in the whole movie. Like the way that he <laughs> emotes with—it's not just the mustache. Like I love the way that he emotes with like all four arms, <clears throat> and like sometimes he'll just be like moving two and like have the other two crossed. Or I love how he's always like getting stepped on, <laughs> <laughs> and he, but he and, never uh, dies. I he never you. dies until until he does. <laughs> oh and, uh, God, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah, and but also his voice, like you, like you and McGregor does a great freaking voice for him. Like it took me a while to like notice that it was him, because if you watch the one that Disney put out this year, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays the cricket, and his voice, like he's good, but it's a little annoying. Like his voice for the character was a little annoying. I mean, props to him. You can't even tell that it's him, but in this one, I think this one fits. It's like a poshness and a proudness, and <laughs> he sounds like a writer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's so, and he's great. Like I love those. See, I, I love when when the the blue fairy is about to turn Pinocchio into a real boy, and he pops out. And he's like, "Hey, this is my house." Like I saw earlier today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, Geppetto go goes into a drunken rage, cuts down the tree, and subsequently creates this wooden boy. Um, but a wood sprite comes out, you know, from his sorrow and says, "You know what? I got you. I'm gonna give this one life." When uh, when Sebastian kind of protests, she says, I'll tell you what, if you protect this kid, you teach him right from wrong, I'll grant you a wish. But you already know where that wish is going to go. Um, <clears throat> but Sebastian says, I'll do the best I can, and that's all you can ask of me. Yeah. And she's like, that's the best anyone could do. Yeah. Deal. So Pinocchio is brought to life. And from the get-go, fuck this kid. <laughs> I, I, I learned to like him, but at first I'm like, just stop breaking things. <laughs> like, what's yeah, this? What will it do? It's just smashing shit, breaking stuff, breaking this, the glass, and just like, stop it, you toddler. Yeah, that's that's what a kid <clears throat> is. That's what a kid do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Didn't expect less. <laughs> yeah. And then. Yeah, and then we have the the scene where 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 he goes to the church, and uh, like uh, there's this like preacher character and this uh, like leader of the city character, president, congressman. I don't, I don't know what he is. Um, who are just like this this couple of douches, just like <laughs> over Geppetto the whole time, just like trying to trying to keep like his kid under under control, and one of the most amazing scenes happens really early in the movie, which is when uh, Geppetto's working on the on the cross in the in the church, and everyone is is talking about this scene. I, I we have to talk about this scene, but it's like uh, when he gets to the church, all the people get scared. They don't understand uh, Pinocchio. They don't understand what he is, why he's moving. Um, Geppetto can't uh, describe it either. And he has to like kind of live with it and start to understand it. And then there's a beautiful scene where um, Pinocchio is looking at Geppetto and working on the cross, and he he just goes like, "Why do they like him, but they don't like me? Like we're both made out of wood." Uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so beautiful. <laughs> like just that one scene was like that really encompasses so much about us as people like the human experience and 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 so much just, just like putting to it and it's like it's it's the that's the moment where like i was a little annoyed with him and then i started liking him just when he made that comment i'd agree yeah. pinocchio gradually over the film becomes an annoying little shit to a really likable and endearing character because he he has to learn he he's young and yeah. naive and stupid and that can come off as annoying but inevitably it comes like no he's learning like he's a kid you know, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and they finally, finally, you know how I was pitched that, like, look, if this was real life, they'd find a way to weaponize it. Now yeah. I pitched that in a bunch of different movies. Yeah. Yeah. They weaponize it here. I think I, I think I said that in Wednesday, where it's like, 
why aren't those kids in the military? Like <laughs> fucking werewolves and, and sirens. Like you and I both know there's a Black Widow siren out there somewhere convincing world leaders to like overthrow their own government or something. But that's besides the point. They want to weaponize Pinocchio, and then there's this bastard, Count Volop. Yeah. Played by the villain, the the most villainous villain to have ever villained, a Mr. Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Yes. Yes. I was like, I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly. But yes, Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. <clears throat> and uh, he, I recognize his voice immediately. I'm like, you slimy son of a bitch. Why do you keep going back to, to the Axis powers? Because he's so good at it. Like, he plays such a conniving little douchebag <laughs> so well. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I know he's not bald, but I'm just saying, if he played Lex Luthor, I wouldn't be against it. He would play a great Lex Luthor, yeah. Like, he doesn't He doesn't even have to go bald. He can be like, I, I with the the amount of, of charisma that I have, my hair stays. It refuses to leave me because it understands the greatness that I am. I can't talk like him, but you get what I'm saying. Oh um, yeah. I was I was waiting for the accent and yeah. I, I I'm not even gonna try. I'm not gonna insult him. <laughs> All right, Christoph Waltz is one of the few actors that I respect, respect, respect. <laughs> I it's like Tom Hanks, sir. Yeah. Um but yeah, so that said, uh Pinocchio is supposed to go to school, gets wrapped up in the circus, signs this life contract and dies and then we get one of my favorite scenes actually where oh, you like the the rabbits i i actually really like i like the concept so yeah it's always interesting to see other people's idea not necessarily of death but what does the afterlife look like to you or how do you interpret it i always thought that was interesting marvel has a few different versions dc has a few different versions different creators have created different versions of heaven and what it could be like mm -hmm. and in this one the thought of the black rabbits, you know, to your demise, yeah, yeah. and then we have the time, the life and death sphinx, and all that, and the hourglasses. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, like, like genuinely, that is art. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like you could take a screenshot of that part and you could hang it up on your wall and be like, Guillermo del Toro painted this, <laughs> and, and I, it's not out of place. No, no, no. I love the, the the rabbits too. I love that they had personalities and they talked and they were playing uh, card games. I love that they kept popping up. They were like old Italian New York, like uh, <coughs> like these guys who were just yeah. chilling. Like it's like the like carrying dead people is their office job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't black door, you know what it mean. You know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh no, they were great. I yeah. I love the love the rabbits too. Um and I love that they kept showing up, like because they have this whole thing with like Pinocchio like dies and he just keeps appearing there just to like annoy them. <laughs> yeah. Um No, and again, I think that adds up to his endearingness of like I can't die. This is kind of cool. And again, yeah. that goes into lessons that he learns later on. Um Yeah. But uh but so Pinocchio, after coming back to life, decides he, he'll join the circus to help uh, earn his father money. And it, there's a scene, there's actually something I really want to talk about that I think really strikes hard, not necessarily with everybody, but with me, it did like at the pause the movie for a second, like reflect. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a part where Geppetto's walking with Pinocchio and says, You're such a burden. Yeah. And Pinocchio says later on, his nose didn't grow, he meant it. And Jimmy and I'm sorry, Sebastian's kind of tell him like, look, sometimes adults, fathers say things that they don't, that they mean in the moment, but they don't really mean. And they realize it later. And for anyone that's ever had, I don't say like a tough relationship with their father, but I think we've all, for the most part, had those, you know, clashes with our parents. Yeah. Um, That one kind of hit. <clears throat> that one kind of hit. I'm not getting choked up, by the way. I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> but that one kind of hit because it was like. This is getting raw. You know, uh, a, a father, a man who lost his son, who was thrust back into fatherhood, who has to be, has to be the parent of this unruly child, a kid who is nothing like his first son, um, lashing out. And he's human. And I'm not saying it's okay, but it's part of what makes the film so good, I think, and relatable. Because I, I found a lot in that moment when the dad says, you're a burden, like, Ow. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's a heavy layer that is constantly <clears throat> being presented in the movie because we see Geppetto as both like remorseful but also uh sad. You know, you you do feel bad for him. Like that's not that's not a, something that you see in a lot of versions of, of Pinocchio. Like you do see like it's hinted and oh maybe he had a kid. No, he definitely had one here and we were able to see it and see the relationship and yeah, it's a little too perfect. But it's important to see it in that way because then the, then the lesson is gonna hit properly. Yeah. Um, so the movie starts evolving. Like uh, Pinocchio has to tour with the circus in order to send money back to his family, uh, which it never arrives. And send money back to his family. Yes, yeah, send money back to his family, and then he never does, and then it just keeps uh, keeps making problems. So. Yeah, we uh, we move on from there to, you know, Geppetto and, and Sebastian are looking for him. They keep traveling and trying to find him. And we see we start to see a little bit of the monster creature, which is the the, 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 the monster uh, a creature, uh, which in the original was a whale. And this one is like a big, ugly uh, uh, fish. Lagoon and fish thing. It's amazing. I loved it when I first when I first saw its shadow because you see it for a second. I thought it was like an axolotl, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah, Mexican!" And yeah. but no, it was just a, a, a very ugly fish, but ugly in like a good way. Like it's supposed <laughs> to be like that. It's 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 beautiful in an ugly way. Yeah. yeah. We also get that great scene of Sebastian scolding uh, Geppetto. Oh yeah. Like, you know, like, what the hell is wrong with you? He's your son. He just wants you to love him. He's trying to make you proud. And you lash out at him? Like, yeah. I mean, I, this this is probably the best uh, Jimmy Cricket we've ever had. Like, I, I, I don't have to watch the other ones to say, this one has personality. And he's pivotal to the plot. He's not just, yeah. like, a watcher. He is there. Yeah, he's constantly helping. He's ten he's living, like, inside of him, which I really like. <laughs> I I, I kind of I'm kind of I'm looking to see if I can find like like a figure of him or something. I want him on my bookshelf. <laughs> I wouldn't mind the matchbox at all. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 cute. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted it because it's it's cool. He's such a got such a cool design to him, and uh, and yeah, so so he's great. They go chasing him. They're trying to find him. Um, somehow Pinocchio ends up with like a group. Oh, he ends up performing for Mussolini. Which, I mean, the fact that they made him a mi that's a mean word. The fact that they made him a really, 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 really short goblin, like, was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And, I don't like and... puppet. I don't like this puppet. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. And he's voiced by Tom Kenny, who's this legendary voice actor for like the few couple of lines that he has. Uh, so he's great. He's, he, uh, I, I, I love how. And then they do like the whole show and dance, which he makes the song that he usually does. But then this time it's like he's talking about how he's gonna poop his pants and about shit and poop and crap and caca and all and, and, all, and all that shit. And that was like the one scene where I'm like, I get it because he's a kid, but I feel like there's also like, okay, let's just do this one scene to keep like kids entertained and funny and 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 stuff. That was the one giving ground. Yeah, it was like it, it was like all right, I, I would hate to be like a middle school teacher right now and like if all my kids like heard that and was were constantly singing it in class like i would go insane but <laughs> you know you know or you could do what uh what mussolini's assistant did and shoot him i'm kidding don't, oh, don't yeah. shoot don't don't shoot kids don't shoot. it's not a real kid so it's fine like that's true it's a puppet you can shoot puppets people you can shoot puppets. yeah yeah uh, they'll can. come back to I, life worst Actually, case scenario you end up in like a Chucky situation, you know. I was gonna say, actually, you know, you know what? I take it back. If you're in the real world, if there's a puppet talking, shoot it, shoot it harder, shoot it faster. Definitely, yeah. Burn the damn thing. Which, by the way, a small little bridge. Did you see the Megan trailer? The part two. No, the Megan. Which part? No, no, the the just just the, the trailer for for the movie. Yeah. Did you see yeah, it? Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. Do you want to see it? Like, are you excited for that? Yeah, fuck yeah. It's James Wan. Like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's going to be fucking awesome. Cuz I uh I, when I went to see Violent Night, I I <laughs> my sister and I went to see it and the trailer started. And I know how the trailer starts, so like it starts and I just turned to her and I go, 
do you know what this is? And she went, no, what is this? And I was like, oh, give it a second. <laughs> and then when, and then when like Megan shows up, she's like, no, like not another one of these bastards. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like no. <laughs> Yeah, so for it some, was just pretty funny. For some <laughs> reason, the Taylor Swift lyrics make the movie scarier to me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. no, no, nah. Can't wait everything to see she it. does is quality, which means this movie's gonna be fucking scary. Yeah, or it's, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, anyway, back to Pinocchio. I just uh, I remember because we we're talking about puppets. So, well, let's talk about child soldiers now <laughs> and conscription. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so he re- so Pinocchio reunites with uh, the son of the uh, of the general from the Chadwick. The, I think uh, is his name Candlewick. Uh, Candlewick, yeah, voiced by uh, the <clears throat> the Stranger Things kid. Which one? Uh, Mike. Oh, Eleven's uh, boyfriend. That that one, yeah. There you go. All right, he's Eleven's yeah. boyfriend. Not Eleven is his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Just so we're clear, we know what... where the main character is. What did he do in the last season besides, you know, walk with the pony outside, outside outside of the plane? Anyway, that was fucking annoying. Actually, I was like, give him something to do. God, him and Young Daryl do nothing. Young Daryl, the the guy who plays um, what's his face's brother? Oh, John, <laughs> Young Daryl from The Walking Dead. Yes, yes, he looks like Young. He looks like Daryl when he was young. Oh Tell me I'm wrong, God. Chema. Tell me I'm no, wrong. No, no, I see it. I see it. If they ever did a Walking Dead like prequel series, him. Oh my God. Him and then a DH Michael Rooker. With CGI. Michael Rooker was in the Walking Dead? Yeah, he was Daryl's big brother. Oh my God. That's arguably what made him famous in this. Well, no, he did other things, but like that's where I know him first. To me, he's the guy that ate the 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 poop uh cover pretzels in Mall Rat, so. Ew. Yeah. Oh God, Mart's fucking classic. Anyway, let's talk about uh, child child soldiers. Yeah. So <laughs> he meets up with uh with with, with Candlewick, and yeah, he's being sent to this like army recruitment uh, location. Where the <clears throat> <clears throat> damn you sickness. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, they're taken to this place for. Kids to be trained, you know, the future of Italy's youth, the greatness for the mother, for the fatherland, sorry. Um, and there's a few different themes going on here. One, obviously nationalism, fascism, mm-hmm. um, indoctrinating children, which I'm like, I mean, that's what that's what the bad guys do. That makes sense. Um, but we also get this interesting contrast between father and son, where we have Pinocchio and Geppetto. On the other side, we have Chadwick and his father, who... Like at one point, tells his son to shoot Pinocchio. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that's after Pinocchio and Chadwick become friends. They they form a bond of like you know I'm scared I'm scared too it's okay yeah and yeah you know they, they form this genuinely endearing friendship. I didn't like Chadwick at first, but I mean Candlewick at first, but no, you you grow to like him. He's a uh, kid, you know, uh, <laughs> and I like that the movie like took a step back to remind us that like he's living in the shadow of his father and yeah. he can't like just he's allowed to be a kid. Uh, and I like that they gave Pinocchio another friend because, yeah, he has the he has the, the cricket. He has him. I forgot to talk about the monkey. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're right. Yes. The monkey who might have the second best redemption arc in this whole movie. <laughs> what was the name Spatatuda or something uh, Spatatuda something like that yeah what a what a, uh, so much personality in that little monkey in a blind well one eye blind monkey is yeah. like one of the most loving characters in the story no because like the design is great it's so crazy and then also um, it's very emotive very emotive you know he goes kind of everywhere and I like that he has that moment where He's initially jealous of Pinocchio, then like gains trust in him, like they become friends. Did you saw who voices him? No. So uh if you finish <clears throat> watching the movie on Netflix, uh there's a little special that was put up on Netflix as well of, of like how they how they made the movie. And I watched it after I finished the movie, and it shows like, oh, this is how we made the puppets, this is how we divided the story, this is how uh the total like uh takes uh takes his coffee. You know, they, they do the whole thing, they cover everything. 
Yeah. And then when they get to the cast, they're like, "Oh, David Bradley is Pinocchio. Oh, Gregory Mann is uh, is 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 Geppetto. Uh, uh, it would, here's Ewan McGregor re- recording his lines." And then Kate fucking Blanchett shows up, and she's like, she, "She's like, I was on the set of of Nightmare Alley with Del Toro, and she, he was showing me everything about the Pinocchio movie, and I was like, you gotta put me in this. I, I want to be in it.'" And he was like, "Oh, we already cast the whole movie." I only have this monkey. And she was like, I can be your monkey. So then there are these scenes of Kate Blanchett in the studio with like her hair tied up super seriously going like, do you want that to be like higher or do you want it to be low? Like she took it super seriously. <laughs> and she's like, I love Del Toro. I would, I would play a pencil for him. And it's oh. like, Jesus Christ. Like this is a, this is a several times Academy Award winning woman who's like, at the top of her field, she's so charismatic. She's so good in everything that she is. And she's doing monkey sounds for this animated <laughs> movie because she wanted to. Like, that is the power of Del Toro. <laughs> the respect. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. The respect. Yeah. But damn. Yeah. Um, and Spotify, he, he. So after the bombing of the child soldier camp, yeah, <clears throat> where Pinocchio and Candlewick are able to get away safely, the son of a bitch Count Volop decides he's gonna burn Pinocchio at the stake, and Spazzatore finally like is like, you know what? No, fights the Count and tries to save Pinocchio and drags him to the edge. And there's a point where the Count and the monkey drop, and I'm so scared. I'm like, please don't die, please don't die. I love the Count hitting the rocks, and I love the fact that Spazzatore hits the water and lives. I was like, yes, yeah. victory. Um, and then Pinocchio, I think he dies and comes back, gets out, and then him and Spazzatore are swallowed by the whale, where we get a reuniting of father and son and monkey and cricket. Yeah. And they become, for like a good second, I'm like, oh, whole gang's here, you know? (laughs) (laughs) The Avengers have assembled. Yeah, in a a, a weird way. And we have this great chase scene with with the monster. Like, uh, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. Like, this thing is so amazingly detailed. I, I didn't even think, uh, for a second, I forgot I was watching, like, a stop motion thing. Because I was like, how the fuck did they do this? I thought that, too. I was like, did, is this the only CGI in the film? Because how the fuck did they do this? They did not. It's not. It's not CGI. <laughs> yeah, that it's surprised amazing. me. That surprised it, just me. Re- it reminded me of, like, uh, if you watch the... Uh, Laika did this movie called Kubo and the Two Strings, which is also stop motion. If you watch the movie after the credits, they, they show like how they animated like with like with their hands. And I just, I would love to see one of those for this because Jesus, how did they do that? Like I saw that the the one scene where like the monkey comes into the circus and he just starts swinging and moving and everything. That took them like three months to do. I was like, just that one, really? just that one establishing shot. Yeah, they had to change like the design for the villains and. Oh god, it took them like uh, 10, 15 years to make this fucking movie. And oh my god, you can really tell, you can really tell the effort that it was put into this thing. See, when I when I checked it out, according uh supposedly Del Toro had trouble getting um funding. Yeah. Which I'm like, it's Del Toro. How do you not just give him all the money that he asked for? Because the thing with Del Toro, and this is this is really sad, like his movies end up costing like a lot of money, and while they're they receive a lot of awards and they are loved by the public. They're not movies that are blockbusters. So you do a Del Toro, a Del Toro movie for more for like for the prestige. Pretty much. Yeah. That's fair. I understand that. Cause like, for example, like Pacific Rim is one of the greatest action movies of the new century and it didn't make enough money, but like enough people know about it. And I think that's more important. I mean, you could do a, um, you could do a Pacific Rim versus Godzilla movie. JK. <clears throat> so yeah. so we get the whole gang in the whale. Um, yeah. Trying to find a way out. And Pinocchio kind of finds, I think, like the one and only way. And, you know, everything's all happy. Like, Pinocchio, this one time, lie, my boy, lie. And... Pinocchio lies, he gets a tree going. And at first I thought, are they gonna like kill the whale with all the wood that Pinocchio's gonna say? But no. <laughs> um they're climbing out, Pinocchio begins to fall, 
And in a beautiful moment, Geppetto jumps down after him. Like yeah. like a true like father son moment where Geppetto risks himself to save Pinocchio. Uh, gets him. They almost kind of sort of get out. And then the whale's like, you know, you know what? I want you dead. I need you. Yeah. <clears throat> and then And they use that's when they use the mine. Right? Yes, yeah. Pinocchio is yeah. able to to set the mine off and and kill the whale, but Geppetto's also drowning. Yeah. And that's when they have to like get out of there and, and Pinocchio technically like dies this time uh, possibly for like how to explain this? They make him mortal at that he, point. Yeah, yeah. well, he, he makes a deal. Like, like he wants to come back early, and the Sphinx says no. Like, the only way you can go back early is if you break your if you, is if you break your um, your hourglass. But if you yeah. do that, you become mortal, and the next time you die, you're done. And Pinocchio makes this very and again, like I said, as the movie goes, he matures more. He makes more decisions. He learns about the world. He makes this decision and he understands the gravity. I will eventually die if I break this, but yeah. I need to save my dad. Yeah. So uh, so he comes back as a real boy, quote unquote real boy, saves his father uh, from drowning, but he dies in the in the process. He dies because, for real. For, for real. Yeah. For real since this time. And it's all sad. And we're all sad. And I, for a moment, thought, what if this is just how it ends? <laughs> like, what if just... Uh, the balls. You know, the balls that they would have. But no, you know, we do have a different kind of happy ending, which I really appreciated. Um, at the beginning of the movie, when we see uh, that uh, the the blue fairy or the, the wood sprite, as it, as it is presented, uh, when, uh, when she gives uh, Pinocchio, you know, life, uh, and assigns uh, assigns cricket to to help him. Uh, he does say like, uh, if you manage to turn him into a real boy, I will turn. I will you know fulfill one of your wishes. And he goes, you know, that's great. I want I want fame. I want fortune. I want my book published. And and I thought, yeah, that's 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 the ticket, baby. Good 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 job. Uh, but uh, he says, no, I'm gonna use my wish. I turn him into a real boy. That's what I did. I did my best. That's the best that anyone could do. Uh, I want him to come back to life. So he comes back to life and everything is great for like two minutes. <laughs> and then, <sighs> yeah. And then here comes a hard hitting ending that Del Toro does so well because we uh, see what life is. Like they return home, they all live as a family together Geppetto, Pinocchio, the cricket, and Spatatura. Uh, but Pinocchio, being what he is, he is immortal. So we show these scenes of him like outliving everyone. Like he outlives Geppetto, he outlives a cricket, and they keep him in like a little box inside of his heart. He outlives Patsatura, and then he just goes, leaves home to travel the world. And it's sad, but in a good way. It, like, yeah. It, it feels right, though. Like it feels like something that would that's life. That's the inevitability. The same way war takes young lives, the same way, you know, there's fascism, there's child soldiers, like there's hardship. This movie ends on a sad note, but not on entirely on a sad note. Geppetto passing, that's really sad. Jimmy Cricket, he's like, he found me by the windowsill one winter. And you see uh Spatatore, you know, even has a crutch, like he's getting older. Yeah. Until eventually he fades away too, and you have all the graves. Um, and Pinocchio goes off on his own adventure, you know, and you're left to kind of uh, assume, you know, what's going to happen next. And I think Jiminy Cricket even says, you know, people will wonder if Pinocchio, you know, he hasn't come through yet. People wonder if he'll ever die, and I think so, but I think he has an adventure to have first. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and it's it feels right. It feels like a a, a good ending there and yeah and there's something like really like both dark yet attractive about it and i love it we even get like a little scene at the end with uh, with cricket uh, with the black rabbits like that 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 was thank you thank you that's all i needed that you know that's did you see that scene or or not the oh at the very end 
yeah, at the very end, like we see like Cricket talking with the white rabbits and telling him like the whole story. No, actually, I didn't see that. Oh, it's a, it's like a, it's like the credits start and then it and then it oh. goes into that. Yeah. Oh, when it's it fades nice to black, scene. I stopped it. Oh no, it fades to black and then like it's you realize that he's you know he's been narrating the whole thing. Yeah. So it shows that he was narrating everything to the black rabbit. So he's sitting there at the table like playing cards with them and he's telling the story. Huh. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's it's like doing the end credits. He sings a little song. It's great. Uh, uh lovely, lovely little little movie. Lovely little scene. Um, something uh, interesting is that have you ever heard of Over the Garden Wall? No. Okay, so it's uh, it's like a limited mini series that was made by Cartoon Network. Okay, uh, it's about these two brothers that get lost in the woods and and, and they're trying to try, they're trying to return home. It's like six episodes. It's great and it's very dark. Like it's extremely dark in a way that like cartoons really aren't anymore. Anyway, it's great. Uh, the creator, his name is Patrick McHale. He co-wrote the script with Del Toro, and you can see his fingerprints all over it. Like if you watch Over the Garden Wall, uh, I watched it uh, a couple of Halloweens ago. Like I binged the whole thing in, in in Halloween, and it was great. And uh, so yeah, big fan of this. Big fan of him uh, collaborating with Del Toro in this. And man, everything about this movie I think is great. Uh, the the score by Alexander Desplat, the direction, the animation, the lighting, the colors, the voice acting—it's one of my favorites of the year. I, I I was looking forward to it the entire year. I knew it was gonna be good, but damn, it blew my socks off. I think this movie's great, and uh, they're they're having a, a little a uh, little event here in, in in Mexico where they have the actual puppets in one of the in one of the. Uh, like convention events here, and I think I'm, I might go check them out before they leave. So, because it would yeah, be really awesome. cool to see them. Yeah, it would be really cool to just to like see them face to face. Um, man, I don't know what to say. I adore this. I, I loved it. It's it's I, it's almost a ten out of ten for me. Um, I don't know what makes me not give it a ten out of ten. Like I really really liked it. Uh, I think it's almost perfect. Uh, definitely the best version of Pinocchio that there is, and Del Toro can now hold. A, a very specific title that not a lot of people have. Like I can only think of like Wes Anderson and him that have directed both uh, live action and, and animation. Oh, and uh, Brad Bird. But like, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go down a road for like very like specific. What did Brad Bird direct? Specific. Brad Bird directed The Incredibles. But what's stop motion? I don't know. Like uh, I mean, live action and anima- animation. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, wait, yeah. what? Gotcha. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because well, I was thinking of like Wes Anderson. He did like live action, but then he's also done like Fantastic Mr. Fox, and then he did you know the dog um, one, Dog Island. The Isle of Dogs, yeah. Isle of Dogs. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, not a lot of people have directed like both animated and live action. So good for him. Yeah. Well, well I'm sure that's why there's a co-director. Like Del Toro is humble enough to be like, I might need a spotter here. Yeah, I might need like some help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, but yeah, can't. Uh, yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to the Jim Henson Company for making all those puppets. And yeah, you know, what real else? quick props uh, to the props to whoever did the music for this. Alexander the songs... Splat, yeah. Who? Yeah, Alexander the Splat to the score. Guess who wrote this, the, the 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 lyric of the songs? Who? It was El Toro. Now, I was going to say, it would only make sense if it was Del Toro, because it felt so personal. Yeah. Because Del Toro even said, and I'm sure, um, I I actually did some research for this this one. Del Toro said that there's no character he's connected with more on a personal level than Pinocchio, because of his out-of-the-water, not just appearance, but who he is. Like, he's a wooden puppet. He's not a real boy. Uh, and Pinocchio felt often felt like a fish out of water. So the fact that this was a passion project that he had for years, I think it actually would have dampened the movie a bit if I found out someone else had written the songs. Yeah. Because they felt Plus, too personal. Yeah, and then also like when you see the history of Del Toro, especially with the relationship with his dad. Like, do you know the whole the story about his dad? No idea. So uh when Del Toro started making movies and he started to become like a slightly bigger name, like when his movies started like Man, he was uh, he was still living in Mexico, and he was in the United States, like promoting a movie. And his dad gets like captured by like a, by like a cartel, like he's held at ransom. And 
they know it's his dad. They know Del Toro's got money, so he's like, but but like, he doesn't have like a lot of money. Yeah, because like he's he's a barely like starting rising star. And out of, so th- this guy starts act asking for like a million dollars to release his, his father, and out of fucking nowhere, James Cameron comes in and is like, "Here, here's a million dollars. Get your dad back." So he saves his dad, and then he moves his entire family to the U.S. And he has not lived in Mexico since, and he feels horrible about it. Like he feels so away from Mexico, and he but he says like I feel like I'm like rejected from my own country. Like I don't feel safe. Like I'm like like it's horrible. And so imagine like the relationship that he must have for his dad for like something like that to happen. Yeah. God damn it! Now I now I can't hate on on fucking James Cameron now. Oh, I would never hate on James Cameron. The man's uh, the man's like. Okay, pre finding out this information, I would have been like, this guy's just head up his own ass, calm down about this, that, and the other. Like, now I'm like, ah, James Cameron's a caring soul, and I appreciate him. Do you know how, do you know why James Cameron like, gets the result that he does and gets like all the budgets that, 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 that he wants? No. Because he knows how to do everything. Like, there's pictures and like, uh, of like, he's had every single job in Hollywood from like, building like wood to like painting to directing to doing everything so if so he only gets like the best people and if he can't find them he'll just fucking do it himself like that's why he takes no shit from from anyone and that's why his movies always get results he's a perfectionist and i i kind of admire his work ethic like he's fucking insane in like a great way um so yeah so like every, literally every single time that like someone tries to like criticize like his like in the industry like try to stop him or something he's always like no, it's gonna work. Here's the result. Here's why. It does. Here's why it's gonna work. And fuck you, it's gonna work. And it does. Literally, all of his movies are blockbusters. Like that man's like untouchable, and he's also like a good dude. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Fine. I will. I will retract anything negative I've ever said about James Cameron, with one exception. What's the one exception? Rose. Oh my god. And Jack could have fit on the goddamn door. I think he just did like a, like a, a scientific hard, research like, to prove it that it's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've seen plenty of memes that say he's full of shit. Oh my God. <laughs> and as we know, kids, the memes never lie. The memes never lie. Yeah. Also, I found out why uh, Avatar took so fucking long. Because he can't let it fail. No, it's because he kept, oh my God, it's the first film he's directed, directed in 11 years because yeah. of the time it took to make the stop. Okay. You know how they filmed the inversional one with like balls on the direct on the actors and yeah. motion capture and all that. It was because mm-hmm. it took them like five years to to develop the technology to be able to do it underwater. <laughs> he was like, they were like, that doesn't exist. Well, I guess we're gonna have to make it. R and D, get started. Yeah, might as well. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Wait, so Pinocchio? I- yeah. Final I, think thoughts. It, I think it might be the best animated film of the year. I think it's up there. Definitely uh, going to win the Oscar. Like, for sure it's going to win. Animated. If it doesn't, this, I will be personally offended if it doesn't win the this Oscar. Has, this has, like, a good chance to be nominated for Best Picture. I I don't know if they would go that far. If they respect animation, they'll do it. I don't think they will. Only three movies have been nominated. Animated movies have been nominated for, for Best Picture. I think it's about time it happens again. It was what? Beauty and the Beast. It was Beauty Toy the Beast. Story 3. 3. Toy Story 3. And Up. And Up. Yeah. I mean, it hits the emo- If anything, it has the emotional power of Up and the ending of Toy Story 3. And it outclasses uh, Beauty and the Beast by a mile when it comes to storytelling. So it deserves the nomination at least. I just, oh god, and I feel like that Toro has been going on on this whole rap about like, uh, like respect the fuck out of animation, fucking, and like this would be perfect. It would be perfect if he if it at least got nominated, uh, because I want to see it there. Uh, plus I feel like the Academy like is is kind of is kind of a fan of Del Toro. I feel like uh, uh, I feel like they, they they might do it for him. Hopefully, I think the movie deserves it. I, uh, you're not wrong. Yeah. 
Um, what would you score it? That's the final thought. Definitely an A. I don't know if it'll be in my top 10, but it's definitely given me a reason to double check my top 10 films. Yeah. I also don't, don't know if it's going to be on my top 10, but it's, oh God, I, 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 it's, it's nothing less than perfect, really. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I saw it twice <laughs> and I cried both times. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, everyone who hasn't seen it, go watch it. It's wonderful. It's magical. And yeah, everything you've heard about it, it's great. So I believe that should cover everything. We're going to get started on on our, on our next piece. Um, anything else you want to say before we sign off? Um, shit. Relationships between parents and kids are complicated if... You ever think you need to have a conversation with your parent? Do it. If, if yeah. you feel like you can, if you're in a position to where like you guys can have that hard talk about like growing up and stuff, yeah. do it. It's worth Definitely. it. Sorry to get Definitely. personal here, folks, but trust me, I when when I say that, I say that from personal experience. Have that conversation. No, this is this is the movie to do so. So I think I think everyone should go watch it. All right. Well, we're gonna sign off and we're gonna meet up again in a second. Because we're gonna we're gonna go to toe to toe because some fighting awards I think are gonna be exchanged in the next uh, the next hour. Oof. All right, I think we'll get an answer. Uh, yeah, me too. I, feel like I I was gonna tell you, can we take like a 15, 20 minute break between these two? Because I feel like I need an I need emotional into, like, Not only that, like I need I need to get into some jammies or something like also. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Know. All right. Let's. All right. Uh, I'll resend the uh, invites at like, seven for you, me, and Fernie. Sounds great. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chema. I've been Eddie. And this was The Rollback. Signing off with a reminder to now consider every single bug that you step on. <laughs> Maybe they have a story to tell. Unless they're cockroaches, in which case, fuck them. Yeah, yeah, cockroaches have no story. Bye, everybody. All right, bye, everybody.